I did 36 days of type challenge. Wow, what a captivating challenge this has been. In this video I will share you my thoughts on this extremely popular challenge and is it worth it? If you want to know how I got on, continue watching. This video is split in three parts and I'm going to cover my process, roadblocks and takeaways. So without making it much longer for you to wait, let's get into this video. First things first, what is 36 days of type challenge? Have you ever seen people designing letters and numbers and sharing one per day on their Instagram accounts or other design led platforms? If your answer is yes, then you know what 36 days of type challenge is. This challenge originated in Spain, Barcelona, and openly invites designers and artists across the globe to share their take on Latin letters and Arabic digits. It is annual challenge and this year 36 days of type celebrated its 10th edition. Now that I have told you what this challenge is all about, let's get into my timeline of this challenge. So far this is the biggest design challenge I have taken on individually, meaning not being tasked by the educational institution or tasked in the design agency. I was a bit apprehensive to take this on as it does require a lot of consistency, which is a thing I'm still working on and I am making tiny progress every day on this. I have seen quite a few different takes on this challenge by very different creatives. From what I have seen, I can distinguish two categories of this challenge, practical typeface and artistic typeface. Practical typeface would be something that we can use in actual posters, letters, and other graphic design products. Artistic typefaces are more theme-based as in creating typefaces that are shown in food, architecture, satisfying animations and so on. As a 3D designer, I was leaning towards the artistic category. So first thing I wanted to make sure is that there is a theme. Oh man, did I take a long time to decide on that. I had multiple different ideas, but once I started to script the alphabetic plan, I ran into figuring what to do with the letter issues multiple times. I settled on the plants and flowers and even that was challenging, but I thought I just needed to stick with this one theme. Initially, I didn't realize that there's a very specific date on this challenge. Did a big oopsie. But more than being right on time with the trend, I just wanted to do something that a bit bigger challenge for me that could challenge my design abilities. So I started a few days after the official challenge has started. In the process of planning alphabet, I came up with first few visual ideas for the beginning of the challenge. I had a pretty clear idea of what format I wanted to do. So I started with letter A. The first design challenge I faced was to make sure the texture of a lighter flowers are actually following direction of Petals. I quickly realized that I needed to do some UV unwrapping and adjust the direction of UV islands to follow the direction of texture. Moving on to letter B, it was also pretty easy in terms of composition. I relearned a few things like texture painting as bluebells has a very distinctive coloring. To distribute bells on stem I used particle systems as I just couldn't be bothered to figure out the geometry nodes. It took way too long to achieve somewhat desirable result. Anyway, let's move on. For letter C, I chose to do cactus. There is not much to say on this one. I had an idea even though it didn't seem like the best idea. I thought to myself, this is just for the books. Not every letter can be masterpiece. I still did learn a few little bits about the particle systems, but I still haven't cracked the code on the particle systems in this image. Nevertheless, creation of this image didn't come too hard. I thought that ideas will keep coming as I was working through the 3D models. I moved on to letter D and then it hit me. The creative block. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you would like to support me, please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. Creative block. Well, it was more than just that. 
there were other things that also collided at the same time and just needed to take priority as it happens in life. While I had this block, I had a few things happened that actually did reassure me that my skills and willingness to learn is not wasted. The reassurance also fueled me to keep going with this challenge, not so much for the sake of getting followers, but to continue grow my muscle to finish projects that I am actually started. After this pause, I came back and switched the idea for the letter D. I created daffodils that I really liked. The sunny color of it brought me joy. I wasn't fully back from the creative block in letter D, but I moved on with this newfound perseverance to letter E. And there's something switched in my approach. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. In a letter E image, I came across this challenge to create the center of H in the C, and then it dawned on me. This is the first time when I rediscovered the power of geometry nodes. I went back to famous donut tutorials to remember how to do instance distribution. Seeing how it improved my modeling in this image made me very curious. I have to use this more to figure out more combinations to help me with other images. Letter G. This is where my curiosity for geometry nodes came through very strong. This is also one that I'm very proud of and I felt my creativity using geometry nodes. I broke down the idea of flower as having three different types of petals and I need to set it in a similar way as I did the center of agency and include a few other functions to make it work. I also realized the importance of weight painting and learned a few steps along the way on that as well. Seeing the gerber of flower coming through in my renders my excitement was running really high and also reinforced my knowledge on a letter H. The image required slightly less complicated geometry node setup, but the result was satisfying nonetheless. Starting to feel some confidence in geometry nodes, the next design challenge that I faced was letters I and G. As I chose to do ivy and jade pathos, both are climbing plants, and I couldn't figure out the setup for this geometry nodes, but I knew that the answer is in geometry nodes. So I followed tutorial by Bad Normals and uh, it is quite challenging setup. So I will leave the link to tutorial in the description box down below. Go and check it out. Moving on to letter L, I added another layer of understanding of geometry nodes. I learned to apply multiple different weight paints for the same instance that does different functions. This was another image I was quite proud of because this time I didn't use any tutorials to figure out the different weight paint application. By this point in the challenge, I felt like I have got quite a good hang on basic geometry nodes. So for the rest of the letters, I used variations of the geometry node setups. I used climbing plant setup for letters M, Q, U and Z. I used intermediate level of instance distribution setup for letters O, R and W. Here is a final product of this challenge and a full lineup of the alphabet. So now that I have talked about my process and timeline of this challenge, what are my takeaways? From the philosophical standpoint, the takeaway is if you feel unsure and you don't know the full final result that will come from your project that you intend to do, give it a go anyway. If you feel the block, step away from it, take your time. Go and do something completely unrelated and the thoughts will flow. Don't worry about having it done on time. There was something pivotal that happened in the pause in that creative block that happened to me. Give yourself a little push. Give yourself a little time. You will figure it out. 
From the technical standpoint, I gained so much knowledge in geometry nodes. I really surprised myself. I know there's much, much wider world in this technical area, but just seeing how it improved my 3D modeling skills just from this challenge is amazing. And it I needed to push myself a little bit to get there, but I'm glad I did. Thank you for watching. <laughs> if you have lost it this far, thank you for your support. Leave a comment on what other design challenges are out there. I would definitely like to try. If you enjoy this video and want to see more of these type of videos, please subscribe. It does help me a lot. It also lets me know that there is something valuable in what I'm doing. So yeah, thank you again and have a good day.